What's up, traders? It's Mark Sebastian, your only option. And this is a look at the week ahead, a little bit on the week that was, and the five stocks I'm watching. So let's dig in. Well, folks, um, as you know, this weekend is this week is the Fourth of July, Independence Day, uh, here in the United States. Markets will be closed on Thursday, and it's a shortened day on Friday. Even with it being a shortened day, there's some big news hitting on Friday: non-farm payrolls. Those are going to be key. We've seen economic data really drive markets. Uh, CPI, PCE, and non-farms are the three biggest factors, the three biggest economic reports that people care about. So Friday, despite the fact that no one's going to be here, it still could be an interesting day. Speaking of interesting Fridays, check out the range of SPX on Friday. It blew higher out of the gate. Uh, it looked like it was going for 55.50. I, I thought it could be a parabolic rip of a day. And then, boom, as the day progressed, the market just dropped and dropped and dropped. Let's look at it on the one day. I mean, this was pretty incredible. This crazy run higher and then just, you know, just absolute tankage. The low of the day was actually below 54.50. The high of the day was 50, was up by 55.20 ish, 55.23, 55.24. So we had. Uh, a 74 point range on Friday. The Q's very similar story. Just a massive range. Out of the gate, they blew up. And then, and then, you know, out of the gate, we blew up. We got as high as, you know, 487. And we, we had an, an over not, almost nine point range on Friday in the queues. That's almost 2%. Just absolute nuttiness. Now, I want to show you what I'm watching very closely, and it's involving the SPX. Um, so here's SPY, and here's the diamonds. I've, I've talked about this some, but I want to talk to you about kind of what the, the way this spread is starting to look like it's tightening. Um, the return, the one year returns on the S and P 500 have gotten really stretched over the Dow Jones. Uh, I think that's going to collapse, maybe not all the way, but I think we could see the Dow outperform in the third quarter. Um, looking at the different levels in these indexes that I'm watching, you know, we've got to get over 5,500 at some point. Otherwise, um, you know, given the the price action on Friday, maybe we're going to get a retest of the 21 day. We haven't been back to the 21 day since May 31st. So maybe we're going to get a dip down to the 21 day moving average in the S&P. Q's kind of a similar story. They've actually got a little further to drop to get to there is about $9 is where their 21 day moving average is. Maybe we're going to touch there. Diamonds kind of a different story. Um, they touched it on Friday. Uh, they touched it on the 26th, touched it on the 20th. So we could see money maybe rotate out of the queues, which would drop the S&P, and then into the Dow Jones. Um, so what stocks am I watching? Well, it starts with Amazon. Amazon, two days in a row, um, you know, tried to break 200 and couldn't, um, got rejected at that level. I still think it's going to go higher, but Friday's candle, Friday's movement was really bearish. Uh, next up is Chevron. Um, you know, was one of the oil was relatively strong on Friday. The only thing that knocked Chevron down at the end of the day was the kind of the whole market selling off. Um, but I like this one to potentially rally. Uh, next up on my list, of course, it's Nvidia. You couldn't have a list. Look at it just riding the twenty-one day. Is it going to break? If this thing breaks that 21 day and closes there, uh, you know, and then opens down the next day, we could see 104. 
Up next on my list, of course, it's Tesla. Tesla looks like it looked like it wanted to break 200, did break 200 in the morning, and then failed. Uh, ended up with a doji on Friday. I want to see if it's going to sell off or if this is just a uh, kind of a one day. But Tesla had been one of the names that the market had been rotating into and um, kind of failed on Friday. I'm really interested to see how this one moves. Uh, and last but not least on my list is J&J. Keeps trying to break the 21 day and failing. I think it eventually will. Uh, we'll break this. I like it to go to 148. Uh, bonus watch list name, Chewy. Uh, this is one we got into long on Friday. Yes, Roaring Kitty, crazy candle on Thursday. But I like this one to get to 30 still. It was rallying before Roaring Kitty did any, anything. Um, so I like this one to 30. Uh, let's finish off by looking at VIX. Uh, VIX, after trying to break the 12 barrier again, uh, ended up kind of rallying on Friday and looks like it maybe wants to get to 13. Didn't rally that much, but still keep an eye on VIX. And then the last piece to watch is the bond market. Uh, if you want to know why the market sold off on Friday, there is your answer. TLT got absolutely destroyed, and I would not be surprised to see if, if it breaks that 50 and begins to sell. This is where the market could see some ugliness. All right, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful shortened week. I hope you have an amazing 4th of July. I'm going to be in Michigan with my family, uh, but I'm, I hope you have a, a joyous week. Uh, we are still uh, running a special on Zero DTE. Uh, it, we're adding a ton of extra content to it and we're putting it an annual sa uh, sale price out there. So if you'd like to join Zero GTE, click the link in this email or call us 888-872-3301 to ask about the program. We had a really nice trade on Thursday that delivered 113%. So can't really complain about that. Okay, everybody. I will see you soon. I am Mark Sebastian, your only option. This was the Trader's Edge.